Good morning, you guys. Happy Tuesday. I am um, getting all of the things done today. Sorry, I'm trying to turn on some cartoons for Riker because we're gonna get things done today. I have been out all morning. I was updating you guys on my Instagram, but I've been out all morning running errands. Speaking of, okay. Hold that thought, Mike is calling me. All right, so like I said before, Mike called me. Um, we're doing all the things today. Now, I have been, to be honest with you, I've been completely recharging and regenerating in regards to like filming and like just working in general. We took two weeks off. I took a week off. We went to Mexico and it was beautiful, it was wonderful. And then last week, I did upload one vlog for you guys, but I just didn't want to force myself into filming and I felt very overwhelmed getting back into my daily routine, especially when it comes to orders and things like that. So like before m and Rustics anyways. So Mike and I just took the entire rest of the week. We got home on Tuesday had Tuesday off and we were exhausted from that travel day. And then Wednesday through Sunday, we just spent a lot of time together as a family. We spent the weekend going and getting a fence. Um, we got like all of this stuff to build our fence, which we're so excited about. I did track down a pool. I think I mentioned that in my last vlog um, was that I finally found a pool. It's like the wild west out there, it's insane. So anyway. That gets you guys up to speed. That is what we have done. Also, Friday, I went and got my Pfizer vaccine. Now, I am in an area where there is a little bit of a surplus of vaccinations, and the reason why I qualified is because my healthcare provider is in North Dakota. So I got my vaccine on Friday at 1.55 p.m. That was my first vaccine. As you guys know, I did, and my family and I, we all did have COVID back in November or October, excuse me, back in the beginning of October, we had COVID and I have not had any reactions, no temperature. I haven't been feeling unwell, um, no headaches, anything like that. But I will keep you guys posted in regards to my second Pfizer vaccine coming up on April 23rd. But that officially catches you guys up to date as to everything that's been going on for the past week or so. So as far as keto, I know a lot of you guys were asking um, on my Instagram and um, like DMing me, asking me like how keto is going. So honestly, I am just really hopping back into it. I have not been tracking calories or carbs for the past couple weeks and I have gained about five pounds like net total from like traveling and coming home and trying to eat healthier. And so now today, Monday, I am tracking everything again. So I am going to show you how I bounce back into keto after taking a little bit of a break and to be honest with you it feels really good to do just like a little bit of a break i was really comfortable where i was at with my weight loss when i went to mexico um so i felt that if i were to indulge a little bit i deserved it um and it felt really good not to track anything for just a couple weeks so anyways things like that like recharging i'm such an advocate for recharging regenerating whether it be on your diet, whether it be in your life or your work or whatever it may be, just regenerating and recharging. I It just is so good for the soul. So meditating as well, so good. Podcasts are my favorite. I love um, Angie Lee podcast or the Angie Lee show. She is amazing, has so many motivational things. Um, and I do love listening to Joe Rogan. I love listening to other intelligent people because I feel like I am just one little stitch in this gigantic quilt of beautiful, wonderful, intelligent people in this entire world and I want to learn so much from them. Hence why I'm like such a believer in traveling. Now, we did more of a traditional travel this time where we went and stayed at a resort, but Mike and I are crazy and we would just stay in a little like bungalow in the jungle or like on the beach side in some third world country. Like that's how we are. We would backpack and we, if we could, we would be completely rootless and we would travel full time or we would do like RV full time um, and try to leave like, it'd be more like green and things like that. Just, just a little earth crazy. We love the earth, we love the planet, we love all the people on it. So anyways, so that was kind of like a long winded explanation for like everything that's going on and traveling and whatever. But. Um, I did go to my favorite nursery, um, planned nursery yesterday, 
And I wanna give you guys a little bit of a plant update because things have been happening. Good things, bad things, all the things are happening. Okay, so first off, here's Larry, and he, I am very happy with him. I want to cut this leaf off as well, as you guys can see, there's some yellowing. Um, so I wonder if he is just not getting good drainage because I really haven't watered him for like three weeks, and the soil just seems to be holding on to the moisture. Um, so I'm wondering if he's just not getting good drainage in there. I might have to um, drill a couple of holes. But as you guys can see, I showed you this in my my last video um, in regards to plants I'll leave it linked up here for you guys um, but that was just a few weeks ago um, actually I think it was like a month ago because it was right after Valentine's Day but as you can see those little green shoots turned into big huge leaves and they're just opening up right now and I am a very happy plant mama that this little rehab corner is working really well for Larry I'm super pumped now let's talk about Linda Linda has been replaced with gosh Mike just named her okay Linda, let's talk about Linda real quick. Linda died on us, okay? When we were gone in Mexico, I don't know if she got watered again or what happened, but um, she just completely rotted out. Um, I felt her stem and she was super squishy. All of a sudden, two days after coming home from Mexico, the leaves were wilting. She just was not thriving and I kind of saw that coming after moving her. I felt like something was going to happen, but I was just super hopeful that she would make it. She did not. Um, now we just got this fiddle fig yesterday at Baker's Nursery. The health of it is insanely amazing. Um, oh, thank you. You think we're gonna have ice cream right now? Yeah. Num. What do you think? Oh, what a stinker. He's getting into the freezer, so I have to hurry this up. So um, this fiddle fig anyways is from Baker's Nursery and I am thinking that she's gonna have a lot more, um, a lot more luck. I can't, was it Francis? I think Mike named this one Francis. Francis the Fiddle. Francis the Fiddler. Um, anywho, um, one of the tips that we learned is to leave the soil dry. So this is actually in the smaller pot. Um, we did pay $25 for her. Um, okay, so the soil is hard. Okay, and forming and pulling away from the edge. And that's about the time that you want to water it, okay? So I'm actually gonna let this go even longer. I'm gonna let this go until about um, Sunday and then I'm going to water it. So what we learned from Baker's Nursery, I, and I, just, I honestly just have a cake stand in here. I want her to get some good sunlight at the root base all the way up so that she does not struggle. So, sorry Francis, I really don't wanna move her around too much because fiddles are very finicky, finicky fiddles. They're very, very just like picky about where they are, etc. So I learned that most houseplants can completely dry out in between watering. I didn't know that. Um, I was watering my plants once a week for the longest time and then back in February, once Mike went to Baker's Nursery in Fargo, if you guys are wondering where that's at, um, he went there and he got so much information from the um, people there, like the planters or the horticulturists, is that what they're called? I don't know. Um, but anyways, they just, they know their stuff and they said to let these bad boys dry out. Um, I do wanna call them today and just get a couple of more tips and tricks in regards to my fiddle fig to see if I can get any like additional success with this one, I don't know, but. She's been replaced. Linda was replaced with Francis. Let's see if we can get Francis up and going. I did pick up tulips for Easter. The rest of my plants are doing really well. Um, these are, the cactus are um, slow growing. Um, and my pothos is just loving life up here. Just growing all over. Um, my little snake plant um, that was that's like being grown from a cutting. Um, that guy is doing really well. And then yesterday I also picked up um, a new snake plant, a full size snake plant, and I named him Jake. So um, just because I feel like uh, Jake's have spiky hair and don't ask, I don't know. 
His name is Jake. Okay. So, anyway, Jake is up there. Um, they, the snake plants, love anything from low light to bright light. They're really, really easy to take care of. So I have this one up there in that basket because I feel like it's one of the lower light areas. Um, here's the rest of my other plants. My corn plant up. We did move it up here. Is doing super good. My pothos from Home Depot are doing super, super great. Um, a lot of the dead stuff I've now taken off and there is a ton of new growth up there. So I'm very happy with that. All right, don't mind my house, it's a mess. I'm about to film a cleaning video today, but I have not been doing a very good job at like straightening up. But anyway, um, these are my Christmas cacti, okay? There's two plants in here. Actually, technically, I think this there's a whole bunch of things in here, but um, there are two pots in here. And as you can see, so I can always tell when my, um, cr my Christmas cacti are getting stronger because they'll have some of these guys that stand straight up um, instead of looking a little bit floppier like this, just like a little soggy and floppy. Um, so the health of this plant on this side is looking better, but um, this one's a little floppy, but still getting stronger with some of the tips and tricks that I've received. So anyway, that guy's doing really good. Now, my big Bertha aloe is gone. Um, her root rot was just so bad, and I tried cutting it back, I tried cutting it back, and it just kept spreading. So unfortunately, I'm just kind of left with um, her cuttings. Um, I've got a couple in here. And then I have the rest over here, and I'm really hoping that these um, roots, I had to let them dry out because they were just all squishy and terrible, um, but the plants themselves look really good. They look really healthy. Um, so anyways, I just let the roots dry out here a little bit and I'm going to transplant them back into where Bertha was. They were in these smaller ones. I think they got watered um, too much and led to some nasty um, root rot stuff going on here. So I'm just gonna put, plant them back in um, to where Big Bertha was. All her babies are gonna go in there and hopefully um, they'll keep flourishing. We will see. Now Linda, this is what's left of Linda, the fiddle. Um, I did put some rooting hormone in a glass of water. Now um, I did this a couple days ago so I do need to change out the water. I'm trying to propagate these leaves, and if fiddles have taught me anything, it's that they are so difficult. But um, I am gonna put, I am gonna replace this water. You have to replace it like every couple of days um, when you're trying to propagate them. Again, fiddles are very <laughs> finicky, so we'll see if this is a successful propagation for me or not. I'm not totally sure. So, anyways, but I'm gonna transplant these bad boys because I let them dry out for a day. And um, I was just trying to prevent any root rot. Their mama scared me, so I need to get these back in. Okay, so now today I picked up a ton of stuff. We are starting to plant our own veggie gardens in the backyard, um, and we're gonna be doing like our own compost bin and things like that. Um, but I, I did not get the composting bin stuff today because I have to wait for some landscaping to be done. I can do that because so we have to like dig it down a little ways um, it's just like made out of like an aluminum trash can and like goes on the side of the house it's kind of cool um, but I did get the stuff to start all of my vegetables and um, picked up my strawberries and things like that today I am going to be attempting the um, veggie garden beds by myself um, because I do have a little uh, knowledge when it comes to building stuff um, as far as like um, like simple like cragging things together, I don't know how to domino join things for you all, but that's okay. Um, anyway, I'm gonna be doing three um, raised vegetable or, or like ground level vegetable garden beds um, that I'm going to be building. I think with either pine or cedar. I haven't decided yet, um, and I'm going to seal it with like linseed oil. Um, and I'm not gonna stain it or anything like that. Just using all natural stuff on it. Um, and then I picked up some soil. Now, for those garden beds, those like um, higher up garden beds, what we do is we take just like cheap, like cheaper topsoil, and because they're like a dollar a bag, and we fill the bottom of each of those. We kind of till up the grass, um, not like till it up. I don't want to say that because we don't 
we kind of like pull up the grass, right? So remove the grass or kind of like dig it up a little bit and like mix it in with the topsoil um, that we get. And then we like to put earthworm castings, a mushroom compost, um, and then a compost of manure in there. And then we do coffee grounds and then we do garden soil on the very top. Um, and we usually try to get more like organic garden soil so it doesn't have a bunch of that miracle growth stuff in there. But that is what we're going to be doing. I'm going to be filming that entire process over on my at home channel because I'm going to be sharing the DIY with you guys um, and like how I build them and everything like that. And the step by steps will be on MM Rustics. So you'll see like the process overall over on my at home channel and then like the breakdown of the DIY over on MM Rustics. Um, for those raised garden beds or like ground level raised garden beds um, and then I will be doing an herb garden as well I just need to decide where I'm going to put it. I still have a couple of months before I transfer everything outside So I do have time Apple applesauce doing some applesauce Anywho, okay I'm gonna make a cup salad and get Riker some more applesauce lay him down for a nap and then plant all of the things My eyes are still watering from the onion, but I was craving a really good Cobb salad. Ooh. Um, I have a, it's a chicken sausage with cracked pepper and basil. Um, and I got that from Costco. Like I got like a pack of them from Costco. Um, and then I also have like egg, bacon, tomato, red onion, shredded cheese on there. Um, and I'm just gonna do some ranch. Um, my emulsifier thing that I use, like my immersion blender, is broken. So I can't make my own homemade ranch right now, which is super sad because mine is so good. Um, but anyway, I will give you guys the macros here in a second. This is my first meal of the day. I did have Starbucks at 10.30 and um, I had a little snack when I got home. Okay, so this is the old gate we had here. This is the new gate. Um, it is screwed in. Yes, this is the tour that got pulled off by Riker. Um, so just for safety reasons, <clears throat> we're not putting that back on. I just put him in here to lay down for a nap. But I wanted to show you guys quickly this gate I got. He cannot jump over it. He cannot open it or figure it out because you have to like push down and lift up and push out. So it's kind of difficult. But we like it that way because then you can't escape. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, it's time for Nine. Should we lay down? I'll show you guys. You push, lift, out. All right.
Guys, I have the worst ADD ever. I just got Riku down for a nap, finishing some ice green tea. Mm. It's so, I love green tea, it's so refreshing. I have my hair up in a super cute bun right now. Oh my gosh, the ADD is so real. Okay, so um, like I said, I just got Riku down for a nap. I'm about to work out, which is why I look like this. Um, but I forgot that I was, that I like started the um, smoker so I could make some smoked venison jerky. I've got a whole bowl down in the entryway. I just brought it down here two seconds ago. Don't worry guys, it hasn't been sitting out for a while. Um, anyway, I have the grill going and it's like, Ready, it's been ready for an hour. Oh my gosh, now I'm getting all the text messages. The ADD is real today. It's been real, and that's why I cannot finish this vlog. So anyways, okay, I'm gonna go put the jerky on the smoker. I'm gonna show you how I did that. Um, again, this is just venison. Mike goes hunting every fall with my dad, and he got a really nice big sized deer, and honestly, we just jerky a lot of it um, because it keeps better, and we eat a lot of jerky. like regardless so this saves us quite a bit of money for jerky and is a really like healthy sustainable snack because Mike got the venison himself and all the things okay okay let's go put the jerky on the grill <laughs> And welcome to me in my jammies and crazy hair per usual, like following the whole vibe of this vlog. I'm sitting down and editing and I realized that I did not end this vlog. So I hope you guys enjoyed. It was all over the place. Kind of brought you with me around the house and like updated you on all of the things that we've been doing lately. But I will see you guys on Tuesday for a grocery haul video. I am editing that currently, so I will see you guys on Tuesday. Okay, bye guys.